Good morning everyone and here we are again. Our topic for today is angels. Um, angels in the spirit world. The question would be, well, are there such things as angels? What are angels? Do angels really, really exist? You know, many, many years ago, uh, people would ask me all the time, have you seen an angel? Do you believe in angels? What do you think about angels, Rosemary? Because I've never seen an angel, never, <clears throat> never connected with an angel. I would always answer, I don't know. I'm not sure. I simply don't know. Until the day. The day came, obviously. There's always going to come that day. And uh, I was on a consultation with a woman in the States, from actually from California. And we started the consult. She asked me all of her questions. And her last question was, can you tell me about my angel? Can you tell me what my angel's name is? Can you tell me about her? And as I'm listening to all of her questions, that was the question that I probably had intended in the back of my mind not to answer because I'm not an authority on angels. I certainly at that point didn't know anything about angels, whether they existed or not. So um, we did the consult and then uh, at the end of the consult, she said to me, you know, I said, are there any other questions? And she said, Rosemary, you've forgotten to answer my last question uh, about my angel. My heart sank a bit and I started to tell her, look, I don't really know about angels. I've never seen an angel. And at that moment, I saw uh, another woman who I thought was this, this lady's uh, family. I saw another woman standing in my little study. <clears throat> so, of course, I said, well, I don't know much about angels. However, I do have this lady here. And uh, I started to describe her. But as I started to describe her, the lady I was looking at in the spirit world did a very strange thing. She very slowly began to turn. She began to do like this little pirouette around. And I'm looking at her and I didn't really understand what she was doing, but I'm watching her and I'm talking to this lady on the phone and trying to describe what this person looks like. But as she started to pirouette and I suddenly realized with a shock, I saw wings. I saw wings on this woman's back. Now, I'm saying this to you because I've never seen anything like this before. And I'm thinking, well, not really thinking because I'm so shocked at what's happening and puzzled at what's happening. And the lady, this person is still turning around and she turns to face me and she has the most beautiful smile on her face and she looked at me and she said Rosemary will you tell her tell my client will you tell her my name is Mary and will you also tell her and this I've never forgotten many it's been many years now and I've never forgotten and she said to me will you tell her joy oh greatest of joys that she should finally ask for me. I am her angel, my name is Mary. Joy, oh greatest of joys, that she should finally ask for me. That was, you know, an amazing, amazing thing. I mean, I have so many stories about angels and since that time I've seen a trillion angels, so I can tell you that I do believe that angels exist. I believe that they uh, there are also earth angels. This is a huge topic. Uh, we may have to revisit it two or three times as we go along and continue to do these sessions because the topic of angels is huge and fascinating and interesting. But as usual, I have my spirit guide, Gregor, who is standing to my right side. And further to my right, I have my assistant, Carolyn, who is ready and waiting with all of the questions. Again, we've had tons of questions and thank you for those questions. So let's go to Carolyn and have, can we have our first question? Absolutely. Dear Rosemary, I'm really enjoying these conversations and sending all my love to you. Thanks a lot for being such a good friend. I'd like to know if our angels could be one of our loved ones who have passed and if they are always able to help. Thanks a lot. Love from Spain, Francisca. Francisca, 
I, I'm, we're not really sure whether it's Francisco or Francesca, but we, we think it's Francesca. Hello, and thank you for your question. And, uh, and I hope Spain is doing beautifully, sunny weather. I love Spain. I've been there a few times. Um, do our angels what? If our angels could be one of our loved ones. Oh, right. Okay. Well, let's talk about what an angel is then, first of all, because I have this question as asked often. So we have our angels, we have our spirit guides, and we have our loved ones in the spirit world. Now, very often when we receive messages from our loved ones in the spirit world, or when they come to visit us, they will whisper to us, you know, I'm your angel. But what they're saying is, we love you very much. I love you very much. I'm taking care of you. I walk with you. I'm trying to protect you the best way I can. Some of us have our spirit guides, as I have Grey Eagle. Those of us who have spirit guides are usually those people who are working in this field, in, the, in, the, in, in, in this area, um, and they need help and guidance from someone who is wiser and more knowledgeable than we are, which is what Grey Eagle is for me. Then there are angels. Now, a true angel, when we talk about angels as beings of light, a true angel is a messenger. And a true angel is a being of light, a beautiful being of light that is only doing God's work, is only doing God's bidding. An angel does not decide whether to save you from that car accident or not save you from that car accident. An angel is that being which is sent from God, go help that person in that car accident, go help that person who is in need of some healing. So God decides and God and his angels work together. We can ask our angels anything. We can say, please will you do this, please will you do that. But a true angel, a being of light, will not listen to our requests. Our requests are not what they're about. God's requests are what they're about. Our loved ones in the spirit world do listen to our requests. If they can help, they will. So it's, it's very simple, really. When we're talking about angels, angels with wings and halos, or however you see them, however they come to you, a true angel, a being of light, created from light, works for God, with God, and only with and for God. I'm not sure if that answered her question, but um, it works for me. So let's have the next question, can we? We're, yes, we actually have a live question. Oh, we have a live question. Okay. Now, this is the first time we've actually, we've, we're learning as we go. <laughs> we're not really sure what we're doing, actually, are we, Carolyn? <laughs> we sort of, we're sort of winging it. But uh, we noticed last week we have all these live questions and we didn't pay attention to them. So now we go, we're going to a live question from... Divine energy. That's it, divine energy. Well, I like that. Okay. She says, hi, Rosemary. What secrets do the angels have to share, share with us? Well, if, they, if I could share them with you, they wouldn't be secrets now, would they? <laughs> angels have lots to teach us. Again, if God decides. If God decides that we need their help, which he does often, when we are born into this earth, our angels are bring, bring us to this earth. They, they you know, make sure that we're okay. When we leave this earth, many times, not always, but most times, our angels come for us, again, at God's request. Um, if they have secrets, they're probably not revealing them to me. Uh, but a great question, and thank you for watching, and thank you for your question. Next she question. sends you X's and O's. Oh, X's and O's to you too. Okay. All right, Melissa from Montana would like to know, aren't all spirits angels, and why wouldn't a spirit want to be an angel? Well, all right. Who are you from, Montana? Melissa. I'm going to get into so much trouble, because I already have a friend of mine saying, I don't like it that somebody else has to say the name. You should know the name. Well, I, I don't, but hello, Melissa from Montana. Right, Melissa from Montana. The spirits. Ooh. 
those who know me well know that every time someone refers to those in the spirit world, you see how I refer those in the spirit world, uh, every time they refer to them as spirits, I cringe a bit. It's like sort of referring my neighbor as, hey, that one over there. Uh, it's a little bit um, not meaning to be disrespectful, but I always cringe a little bit because I think there are ways that we need to approach those in the spirit world. Those in the spirit world are our loved ones. They are people. They are men, women, children. And, uh, you know, they're not, when you call them spirits, when people call them spirits, we're inclined to, to think of a spirit as a wispy bit of something or nothing of not any particular substance. So please, 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 when you talk about those in the spirit world, refer to them as those in the spirit world, those people in the spirit world those loved ones in the spirit world, those who love us. No, not everyone wants to be an angel, although we do strive to be angels, those of us who want to learn and who want to grow, which is, and I'm going to produce this because I brought this out this morning because of this topic. But those of you who haven't seen it, I don't know if you can see it, it's the light shining in it, and it's called Angels in Training. It's a little book that I wrote. It's... um. 52 exercises, daily exercises that you can do to help your angels, to help the angels, those angels that are in the spirit world. Because angels have hu a huge job, you know, God sends them here, there and everywhere and they have tough jobs to do. So anything that we can do to help our angels, anything that we can do that helps somebody else, helps our angels and so these exercises are you know just simply simple ways and means for us to pay attention to how we live our life to pay attention to when we can actually if you like be an angel in training it doesn't matter it doesn't mean that an angel in training is then going to you know when we die going to become an angel as I've said, an angel, a true angel, is a being of light created from the light solely and specifically for God's direction. <clears throat> so, and I also, you know, not sure, I'm not actually sure that we can attain that level of becoming an angel. But our loved ones in the spirit world will often say, when I'm giving messages, tell her I'm her angel, which again means... Tell her I'm striving to bring her the most light and the most love that I can. And so when we refer to our angels in the spirit world, our angels who we know and love, they are our angels specifically for us. They are not doing God's will. They are simply striving to help us. So I personally would not dare to strive to be an angel. Oh, that's got to be such a tough job. I don't think I'm nearly capable of it, but I do strive to be an angel in training. I do strive to live my life as I believe that my angels would want me to be. Next question. All right, Chris from Vermont asks, can you please explain the difference between an angel and being angelic? Well, first of all, we should, and I neglected to say this, we should say that Chris from Vermont is actually here with me she's a friend of mine and she posed this question this morning so we just threw it in there because you know she's a friend and she gets to have a question and said what's the difference between being an angel and being angelic well again i reiterate an angel is a being of light and again i'm going to reiterate if you want to be angelic if you want to be a good person and as good as you can possibly strive to be as good as you might think your angels would want you to be then you're striving to be angelic then you're striving to you know sort of to to be an angel in training being angelic my grandson is angelic um even when he's not being angelic he's angelic to me he was having a time out the other day when i called and i could hear his wailing crying in the background but He's my angel, and he's a 
beautiful angelic child being good being angelic striving to be good striving to be like our angels because our angels of course are angelic they are beings of light and doing only God's work so when we strive to be angelic we are striving to be like our angels and striving to do what we feel God would want us to do next question Elsa from Vancouver Island do spirits on the other side know about a person's health on this side? Hello, Elsa from where? Vancouver. Vancouver. I know it just goes in one ear and out the other. I know there's nothing. I'm getting old, guys. What can I tell you? Uh, but hello and thank you for your question, which was... I don't know what's happening to me this morning. <laughs> this proves we're live. <laughs> do spirits on the other side know about a person's they, health? They do. And um, if, you know, if we have people who are suffering with health issues, and any of you are out there who are suffering with health issues, please feel free to send out your prayers and your requests to your angels, to your loved ones, to God, to whoever's listening out there, send in your requests. They do know when we are suffering. They do, if they can, try to help. And, um, you know, and if you ask God, can you please say, send an angel to help me? I can't honestly tell you that he's going to say yes, because he might be so inundated with requests um, but there's no harm, as, a, as an old healer once told me, when I say an old, an old man who'd been a healer for, oh goodness knows how many years, once said to me, you know Rosemary, there's no harm in asking for a miracle. You may not get it, but there's no harm in asking. So if you want to ask God to send you an angel to help you with your difficulties, with your health issues, God listens, we're never alone. Uh, and why wouldn't you ask? Next question. Well, this is perfect question for, for after that. I would like to know if you can speak to another person's angel to give them better guidance and put light on their actions. My cousin is doing some very bad things to our elderly uncle, who is like our father, and I'd like to know if we can speak to others' angels. This is from Maggie. Well, we can we can strive to speak to others, angels, Maggie. Hello, Maggie, and um, I'm sorry. It sounds like to me like you're going through a bit of a tough time here. Um, we can strive to speak to uh, others, angels, but I would do it this way because I think you're going to get more from it this way. I would simply say a little prayer, send up a little prayer, and say if there are any angels out there who can help us with this situation. Please, could you, God, dear God, could you please send those angels to us? Because it's all very well as speaking to the spirit world. It's all very well as speaking to angels. Are they going to listen? It depends. It depends what you're about. You also need to, I think this is a perfect moment to say this. You know, when, when we're giving healing to people, when I teach my students about healing and I train my students to, to become better healers, um, we always say, and I always strive to say to people, before you give healing, before you send out a prayer for any reason of any kind, think about this. When we send out a prayer, please God, don't let so-and-so die. Please God, can you do this? Please God, can you send your angels to do that? And specifically in the healing world, which I'm in, Sometimes if you're asking, please God, let this person, you know, don't let this person die, you might be asking, please God, deprive this person of the most beautiful and wonderful experience that they're going to have. We don't know what is best. We don't know what is best for anyone. You don't know what is best for your cousin. You don't always know. We don't always know what is best for ourselves. So before you send out your prayers, all of you who are requesting, and we do request, we do, we are human, for all of those of you sending out your requests, you might want to preface that request with, and I teach my students this, dear God, I will to thy will, 
whatever you feel is the right outcome, can you please help me to get there? Could you send your angels to help me to get there? Dear God, I will, because I don't know, so I will to thy will. I'm going to rely on you to know what is best for me, to know what is best for my family. In your case, darling, to know what is best for your cousin, your brother, your whoever is involved in this. So, you know, be careful because we don't always know what the best outcome is. And we look at things, I know we're human, and we look at things and say, this isn't fair and that isn't fair. But when God sends us trials, he usually does it because he's teaching us something or he wants us to learn something and he's hoping that we're going to be good students and he's hoping that we're going to learn. So rather than try to talk to someone else's angel, ask your own angels, ask God if, you're, if, if he could send angels to help you with this situation and see how that works out because I think it's going to work out better. Do we have another, I think we have another live question. Let's go for it. This is Dean. Oh, is it my Dean? Yes, your Dean. Hello, darling Dean. I've never met Dean. One day, Dean, we are going to meet. But I love it that you're watching. Okay, let's have the question. Some mediums <laughs> say they know the name of an angel they see. How can they know the angel's name? Well, if they, for instance, it's the story that I told at the beginning when, uh, you know, I was on the phone to this person in California and, um, and you know, this angel, I, I didn't know she was an angel till I saw the wings. I mean, I was a bit shocked actually. And, uh, but she said to me, my name is Mary. So you can know the name of an angel. If you see an angel, if you're fortunate enough to have that experience, if the angel tells you her, her or his, na their name, I should say, uh, then, you know, then you'll know it. And if they don't, you won't. <laughs> so, you know, when you're dealing with angels and looking at angels, my experience is that most people, when they see angels, they're so stunned to see an angel. They don't have anything to say. And when you're bathed in the light of an angel, you don't need to say anything. You just absorb what is happening. And really, what is in the name anyway? Does it matter what someone's name is? When I was so first beginning going into trance, I learned. I had a wonderful teacher, a little old lady with no teeth used to come. She used to say to me, I'm the little old lady with no teeth. Never gave me her name, ever. Was she an angel? She was, she was something like, I'm a little old lady with no teeth. And we all, all my students knew her. And she gave us an exercise once. And the exercise was about, she would say, what is your name? No, she wouldn't say that. She would say, who are you? And somebody would say, my name is this. Name. No, who are you? She would say. And we'd say again, our name or whatever. Who are you? And she wouldn't give us a clue, but eventually we got it. And eventually we'll learn to say, I am. That's all you need to know. You see an angel. They are. I am. You are. That's all there is to know. Next question. Katrina asks, at age 11, I saw a girl pass through the wall. She wanted me to come with her. How can I learn who she was? Thank you. Well, Katrina? Katrina. 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 Thank you for the question. It's an interesting question. And we're going to visit questions like this uh, at a later date in, in one of these discussions. Um, I don't know how old you are now. You didn't tell us. But I guess you're not 11 and you're not 12. And it's been a while. So I guess it's been a while since you've had this experience. So unfortunately, because it's been a while, I'm not really sure that you'll be able to discover who this person is or what they were about. But it brings up an interesting subject because, and we are going to visit this because people obviously have sightings. They see, let's say, ghosts. They, uh, we have so many tales and so many emails about people who say, you know, I saw this person, they were beckoning to me and I was afraid because I felt they wanted me to come with them. And, you know, did that mean I was going to die? You know, they wanted to take me to wherever they were. But the, the, the simple thing is, when you see someone in this way, 
as this, you know, person, this being that you saw go through the wall, um, you know, they've just come to visit. And if you feel that they want to come with you, I'm not sure it's that they want, they want you to come with them to the other side. They might want to show you something. They might want to tell you something. So when you see someone doing this or you get the impression, you know, that somebody's saying, come here, it's come here and talk to me. Come here because I have something to show you. So come here because, you know, I, I want you to know me or I want to know you better. So when you see this, people, don't be scared. Uh, it, it really doesn't mean that somebody's come to get you. Uh, uh, all those tales of spooks hiding under the bed, you know, I'm not sure that they do hide under the bed at all, but it's us, we get a bit scared about it. As I'm mentioning spooky stuff, it is coming up to Halloween and we are looking for your Halloween questions and we're going to have some fun with that Halloween episode. Let's go to our next question. I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> here. That's okay. My 22-year-old son sees and speaks to angels all the time. Nice. My question is, they sometimes are not very nice. Is this common? And this is from Kathleen. Kathleen, we, you know, I'd like to know a little bit more about when you say they're not very nice. I'd like to sort of have a little bit more detail because I could sort of go on the deep end and, you know, the pendulum swing sort of far to the left and say, well, are you talking about, you know, when you say they're not very nice, are they mean, are they spiteful, are they evil? Or are you simply saying, pendulum swing this way, are you simply saying, they're saying things that, uh, you know, you don't always want to hear, uh, but maybe that you need to hear. So, you know, this is a whole other topic. We'd love for you to write back and tell us because we are going to be, and maybe a little closer to Halloween, we are going to be talking about, um, you know the spooky side and is there a spooky side is there really a spooky side uh is there negative is there positive is there is there dark where there's light we're going to be discussing all of that and and maybe we can uh look further into your question darling and see if we can answer better if, if i can give you a little bit better advice next question I thought maybe you'd want to uh, recall the messages on a plane. The messages on a plane. Well, you know, uh, we always think of uh, our angels or those in the spirit world of, you know, on high, don't we? Um, and and I was laughing today because as we were talking about angels and we knew we were going to talk be talking about this topic, uh, I did want to, to impart a little sort of angel story but it's not really an angel story but I did have an angel helping me on a plane not so long ago and if Corbin is listening I hope he doesn't mind me um, mentioning his name and uh, Corbin was my um, air host and uh, he was so nice so great and I don't even know you know he was up and walking up and down and asking people if they'd like drinks and so on doing a fabulous job and he's so, so a handsome guy as well, just for the record. And uh, very sweet, very nice, and treated everybody the same. And, um, and I said something to him to the effect of, thank you, you're an angel. And he said, oh, you know, I don't remember the exact conversation, but something like, you know, or, you know, I, I love angels. And I said to him, and it was just like this, out of the blue, is that why you have angel's wings on your back? I thought he was going to drop the tray. He went very pale and a bit shaky and kept looking at me. And he said, how did you know? How did you know? Well, how did I know? Would Gregor have told me? Would those angels in the spirit world have imparted one of those secrets? Nobody could see this, of course. Corbin was fully clothed, <laughs> as he should be. But later on, he came to me and he said, can you tell me exactly what you saw? And I said, yes, I know you have wings, angels' wings on your back. And sure enough, he did, he has. And I haven't seen them. One day, maybe I will. But yes, he has tat a tattoo of angels' wings right on his back. Um, there are other instances I've had some great experiences of people coming and tapping me on the shoulder while I've been on a plane, while I've been sleeping on a plane. Uh, and um, 
in the future will tell those stories too. But angels are everywhere and they surround us. They are everywhere and they come in the most unusual ways to us. Next question. Ready. All right. My mother came back to me in a song I played at her funeral. It has happened seven times now. Ooh, seven's a good number. But rarely now. Why? Well, she's obviously your angel. She, she's your, you know, not a, not a being of light, but she is your angel and taking care of you. And when she first passed, she was obviously very determined. Lucky you. She was obviously very determined to let you know that she's with you and that she in her way is being your angel and, and helping you and taking care of you sort of as time goes on and the grieving process it, you know sort of it, it never ceases we we grieve always when when we've lost someone we love but obviously you are dealing with it better you are healthier you are happier and of course and so she's she's gotten busy and doing her own thing so she doesn't need to come to you quite as much she doesn't need to let you know quite as often because you know and you know that she's there and you know that she's with you. What is the name of this lady? Marlene. 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 You know that your mom is with you and that she loves you. And um, I love the song thing. I mean, it's it's that's it's just one of those things it sends shivers down your back, doesn't it, when you when you experience it. And I've experienced it many times. So good for you. You've had that wonderful experience. Next question. All right, time for the personal question. Well, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go for it. Do you remember when you first saw an angel? Yes. I already told you that story. I already told the story when I first saw an angel, which was in my study. Okay. We began, I do believe, with that story. But I'm going to tell you another story. Would you like another story? It's like, you know, when we were children, you know. Sit down, children, and I'll tell you a story. And I love storytelling, and I love to hear other people's stories, which, by the way, you can send to me any time, and we will read them all. Angels come in many ways, and they come in many guises. There are our earth angels, and one day we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss angels again, and we're going to be discussing what earth angels are, what they look like, what they're what their role is, why do they come here, are they sent by God or not sent by God. But here is an angel story that you might like, which tells you how sometimes really, really angels come in unusual guises and disguises. So I was in a spiritualist church in England many years ago before I ever came to America. And I had, in fact, no intention of coming to America. People would often say to me, would you like to go to America someday? No, <laughs> no, no, I had no inclination. Inclination. I was much more interested in going to the Far East and to the Middle East and, you know, and all of that stuff. Here I am in the church. And uh, uh, in the spiritualist churches in England, once everybody's settled and the congregation is in and everybody's seated, they tend to lock the doors because they have a feeling that once the medium, which I was the visiting medium this particular day, once the medium starts to work, we should not have any interruptions. You shouldn't have people going in and out. So they lock the doors. So we're just about to get going and I'm the, the president of the church introduces me and I stand up and I'm just about to get going and bang, 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 we hear banging on the door. And the people who run the church ignore it. Too late, you're too late, we've locked the doors. Bang, bang, bang. On and on it went until eventually I said to someone, can somebody just open the door and let that person in? Whoever it is, they need to come in. Okay. So they opened the door. Now, at this point, I have to tell you, the church was full. There were no seats in the house. It was, it was crammed. And um, the uh, organist had climbed down off of the, he was up on the stage, and he climbed down off of the stage and taken his seat. Okay, so no seats in the house. So they opened the door and 
this woman breezes in and I can only tell you that, that my friends who were there with me that night, if they're listening, they'll laugh about this because they'll remember it. In breezes this woman, beautifully dressed, with a very, very uh, plum in the mouth, we say in England, voice, a very cultured voice. And she waves her arms about. She walks down the aisle and she's looking for a place to sit. And she waves her arms about and she says, I've just flown in from America. I've just come to see you all. I've just flown in from America. And she's looking for a seat. And nobody's moving. And nobody's offering her a seat. And one of the reasons why nobody's moving and everybody's sitting there sh absolutely shocked looking at this woman is because you could smell the booze on her so strong. I mean, it was it sort of permeated through the church. She was it, it, it was almost as if she was saturated in alcohol. So she kept coming up and down the aisle and she's waving her arms about and she keeps repeating, I've come from America and I've just come here from America and you know, just got off a plane and nobody's budging and the audience starts to tut, tut, tut and people start to shush her and people aren't now being very nice. I'm sort of watching this going on, thinking, what do I do about this? And I finally realized that there is one seat left in the house and it's the one that the organist vacated. So I say to him, if you go back and sit by the organ, we could give this lady a seat and so that's what happens so she sits about three rows back from the front and um, and she settles down but she's very loud and uh, she's uh, you know talking a lot and uh, and you you could almost pass out with the fumes from her and um, again people are shushing and tutting until I say all right Please, can everybody settle down? And please don't shush anymore. And I reach over the, the seats to this lady and I hold her hands and I say very gently and very kindly, can you please do something for me? And she sort of nods at me and I say, can you please shush? shush. Can you please be quiet? Because, you know, this is... You know, we're just, I'm just about to start work. Can you do that for me? So she nods and says, yes. So at some point I come to, I'm coming to the lady in the audience here, the one, lady who's wearing the pink, uh, the pink blouse. And she says, the drunken woman says, I have a pink bra on dear, will that do? And I say, shh, you know, be quiet. And the people in the or in the congregation are tutting. And then the next thing is, um, I come and I'm talking to a young man's grand grandfather, and the grandfather's telling us about the car that he has and how you know run down the car is. The grandfather's using words that I can't possibly use in a church. However, there is a certain lady in the church who is drunk. We all presume who has no worries about using the language, which she does. And she says to me, oh, well, you mean it's, and I'm not repeating the word, and tutting, shushing, so I have to calm everybody down again. And I ask again, please, can you be quiet? And, you know, so for the rest of the time, she was quiet. At the end, as always happens in our good old English spiritualist churches, uh, where everybody gets up and we make tea, and people mill around and connect with each other. And as the visiting medium, and I've just been working, I sit on the, my platform and wait for someone to bring me a cup of tea. As I'm sitting there, this lady, who stinks to high heaven, comes and sits in the seat next to me. And she leans her head on my shoulder. And I put my hand up and I stroke her hair and it's just the two of us now because everybody else is milling around. I'm waiting for my tea. And she puts her head on my shoulder and I stroke her hair and I very gently say to her, how can I help you? What can I do for you? How can I help you? And she looks up and she stares right into my face 
and she's no longer drunk and she no longer stinks. And she looks right at me and in a voice that is calm and quiet and normal, she looks at me and she says, they've sent me, they've sent me from America to come and take a look at you. And she smiled at me. And I knew she was telling me the truth. And I had no idea why. I had no idea who. I was so blown away. She was completely 100% sober. At that point, when I wanted to continue this conversation, I feel someone tap me on the shoulder and it's my friend bringing me a cup of tea. And I wanted to say to her, go away, go away. I turn back and she's gone. And I watch as she walks down the aisle through this mass of people. And I'm watching her and I'm watching her walk towards the door that, or the back of the church. And I'm willing her to turn around. I'm willing her, turn around, turn around. Just look at me once, just look at me one time. And she disappears through the doors. Well, I talked to everybody who's a member of that church. Nobody's seen her before, nobody's heard of her before, and nobody's ever seen her since. So just to reiterate, she looks me straight in the eye, calm, sober. They've sent me. They've sent me from America to come and take a look at you. I have no doubt. No doubt in my mind, she was an angel sent from God to come and take a look at me. For, I don't know why. Did I pass the test? I'm not sure if I passed or failed. I can tell you, though, the result was several months later, totally unexpectedly, I was invited, and it was an invitation I could hardly refuse. I was invited to come to America. And that's what started me on my journey to America. So I'm not sure if I failed and they sent me to America or if I passed and they sent me to America. I'm really not sure which it was. I like to think I passed. But our angels come in many guises. An angel can be that person who sits next to you on the bus or on a train. An angel, an angel can be that person who you brush past in the supermarket or you knock down in your hurry to get somewhere. An angel can be that little snot-nosed kid on the street with raggy pants and no shoes on his feet. Angels come in many guises, but they are around us. And I know a little bit about earth angels and we will have that discussion at some point in the future. You're looking at me. I know with time is up. Almost. I just want to uh, let you know that Dean and Divine Energy are both <laughs> discussing how they believe that they have seen an archangel. Well, good. I'm glad for that. But we are closing. Yep. We are closing. We are done. And so we can talk about your angels and your archangels anytime in the future. Just let me know. Remember, our angels are everywhere. They are with us wherever we go. Earth angels walk among us. And they walk among us to help us, to guide us. You can email us at wherever that is, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. You can go to our website, www.rosemaryaltea.com. You can go to our store, which you'll find on the website because we, we actually do sell books. We do sell meditation tapes. We sell different things. I'm going to be in Sarasota this uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, which will be the 17th of September. 2016 <laughs> because this video can be up on YouTube for years so I'm just mentioning the date uh, FaceTime us uh, find us on Twitter email us for any questions of any kind do we need anything else have subscribe I forgotten and 
don't forget, I always forget something, right? Subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, do I need to give the the address for the if you want tickets for the for the um, event? It is Rosemary dot splash that dot com. There you are. Dot splash that dot com. Yes, there you are. Uh, and um, if you want to ask us any more questions or if you want to participate in our stuff. Um, don't forget to watch the cooking videos. There's a great short little video about chocolate covered shortbread. Go watch it, it's fun. They're my grandson's favorites, favorites, favorites. So, you know, I have to plug that a little bit. Subscribe, we are having a competition at some point towards the end of the year. Only those who subscribe will be available or eligible, should I say, to participate. So do subscribe. Thank you, thank you so much. Have a blessed day.